All right, thank you, sir. I'm gonna pop up and uh, share my screen here just so uh, everybody can see some of the places where I've been. Is that good, Coach? Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so first off, I'd like to thank Justin for allowing me to, to come on and speak to everyone. And I appreciate people who are joining in uh, during this crazy time. I'm sure that's affected everybody. Um, but just a little bit about background on myself. Um, I first got into coaching when I was at Ohio State as a student assistant coach, which back, back then mostly meant a lot of film breakdown and putting things into the computer, which back in that those days, we didn't have anything like huddle. It was all just breaking down VHS tapes and everything like that. Um, but I coached football uh, right out of college and uh, was mostly at the Division three level. And then I, I got into baseball, which was, you know, growing up as an athlete, I wasn't very good at football. I just loved the sport, but I was a better baseball athlete. And at the time when I was at Kenyon College, I was on a restricted earnings contract, which means you don't make very much money, even though you're working full time. So kind of got involved in baseball um, and stayed in that. And after a few years coaching at the college level, I realized that putting in all of that time for very little money wasn't really getting me very far. So I went back and completed my teaching certification. And then I spent eight years in the classroom. Six of those years, uh, I was a high school athletic director, and that was the time when I got involved with softball. Um, and even though I had a really good job, I just missed being at the college level, and I had the opportunity to go and be a head coach at a nearby Division II school. Took a huge pay cut to do that, and it kind of just, you know, led me down the road to staying involved in softball to my current position at Frostburg. So I'm very blessed of the path that I've had and where it's ended up and taken me right now, um, you know, it's been a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, when I first created the coaching portfolio guide about six years ago, it was kind of a result of when I was a young coach in the mid nineties and I first started applying for head jobs, I'm not really sure where I got the idea for creating a portfolio, but I just remember starting to put together a lot of documents in a three ring binder and, taking that to interviews that I had. And I didn't have a lot of experience and, you know, I was applying for head jobs that I um, wasn't really qualified for. So I felt like putting together a portfolio of some of my thoughts and ideas and how I was going to build a program was super important. And, you know, as things continued, I've always been involved in web design and I've built several websites and some side businesses. And for some of you who may have known me from several years ago, um, I created a website called Coachbook, which was kind of like a social networking site for coaches. And Coachbook is still out there. It's not uh, super active like it used to be when I created it about 12 years ago. But I wrote an article on how to create a co coaching portfolio and what kind of things should have been included in a portfolio when you were interviewing for jobs. And it got over 10,000 views in a few months. And I kind of realized that, you know, there was a need to educate coaches on what a portfolio is and how to create one. And, you know, like I said, this was about six years ago when I started building the website. Um, and I had, I had just changed jobs and I was in a position where I was working full time and making part time money. And I literally needed the extra money to, help feed myself and my dog who I dragged all over the country changing jobs and everything and you know, I was giving access to the information for five bucks a pop and literally taking that five bucks off my PayPal and getting lunch and dinner so some of you young coaches or some of you have been in it long enough to know the sacrifices that we've made at times uh, you know know what it's like to to make ends meet but Enough of my background story, let's get into the meat of things there, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of, you know, how things transpired and how I got into this of uh, helping coaches out with coaching portfolios. So I know uh, Coach Chris Four is going to be on later in the week, and he's going to talk about interviews and things. Uh, Coach Four and I have done some webinars together and have collaborated on some things. Uh, so this is from a survey a few years back when we did a webinar, and I just did uh, some informal polling of coaches to find out what they knew about portfolios and if they had a portfolio. So 
of the people who responded to the survey, right around 50% of coaches said that they had a portfolio. About 30% said that they didn't, and almost 20% said they had no idea what a portfolio even was. And the next question I asked in the survey was, if you don't have a coaching portfolio, why not? Um, majority of the coaches said they didn't know that they really needed one or they didn't know what a portfolio was. Um, several coaches said they didn't know how to make one or what to put in it. And the next group there, not enough experience, which is something I hear oftentimes from young coaches is, you know, I don't know what to put in a portfolio because I don't have a lot of experience yet. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, not just what to put in it, but also especially for coaches who don't have a lot of experience, how you can overcome that lack of experience and create a portfolio that will not only help you with the uh, job search process, but will also um, help you develop ideas for your own program. All right, so why do you need a portfolio? So there are seven primary reasons I talk to coaches about of why you need a portfolio. So first reason is it gives you a, um, a reason to follow up after you submit your resume or application for a coaching job. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, later in this presentation on how to how and when to present your portfolio. But following up after you apply for a job is a good way to get your portfolio out there, introduce yourself, and get additional information. Uh, so what I've been seeing um, a lot, because I review a lot of resumes from coaches who ask me to look them over, I see resumes that are like six to eight pages long, and I'm like, it can't be more than two pages when you do your resume, um, because you're going to have a lot of information that gets looked over. So a lot of things that coaches are trying to include on a really lengthy resume are things that should be in your portfolio. So following up after you apply is a, a way to get that additional information into the hands of the hiring director or the AD or the search committee. Uh, another reason you need a portfolio, um, you know, just kind of following up with what I just said there, um, gives the primary hiring person more detailed information about you beyond the resume. Um, so again, you know, right now I've been reviewing a lot of resumes for basketball coaches because um, obviously this is a big hiring time for basketball. And I see coaches who list all every major player that they've developed or recruited that went on to play professionally and it takes up a lot of space on their resume so that should be something that you include in your portfolio not necessarily your resume and again that gives the um the ad or the search committee an opportunity to see those kind of things in a different format demonstrate your organizational skills and attention to detail um, this is a big one for me i'm a little ocd on um you know, formatting and those kind of things. So when you put together a portfolio, it's a great opportunity, especially today with all of the def different technology and programs you can utilize, which we'll talk about some of those uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, just separate yourself to show that you can use different types of software or uh, programs to create documents. Um, and it shows, you know, again, just your organizational skills and attention to detail, which is something a lot of hiring directors are looking for. And instead of, you know, I see a lot of resumes when people put in their summary of skills that they're, you know, they have great organizational skills and they have attention to detail. Instead of just stating that, this gives you an actual way to demonstrate, you know, those particular skills. Uh, gives you something to hand out to the committee at the interview, which we'll talk a little bit later on how I personally like to handle that. Um, it helps structure your philosophies and ideas for building a program and developing your staff. So I, to me, this is a big one, and this is especially why it's important for young coaches who don't have a lot of experience yet. Um, you know, I'll talk about this several times throughout the presentation, but when you're developing your portfolio, you're not only doing it for the job search process, you're also doing it to develop your philosophies on how you would build a program, especially if you aspire to be a head coach. So when I first started developing my portfolio nearly 25 years ago, and I wasn't sure where to start, um, I had a great resource that I could turn to. Uh, I worked for Vince Arduini. He was the head coach at Kenyon College Football when I was an assistant there. And every August before camp started, he would hand out, hand out a uh, staff manual it was a three ring binder and it had about a hundred pages in it and it had everything in there 
how we were going to run the program from the expectations of all of the assistants, their duties, their responsibilities, how we were going to handle recruiting, what the practice schedule was going to look like on a weekly basis, what practice plans were going to look like on a daily basis, um, season goals, program goals, weekly goals, in-game goals. So there was a lot of resources there. And to me, you know, him presenting that to me as an assistant coach gave me a lot of ideas on how do I want to build my program? How would I want to develop my staff? Uh, so the, a lot of the things that you include in a portfolio are your ideas and philosophies for going that direction. So a lot of times I tell people when you're putting it together your portfolio, even if it's for an assistant job, you should be thinking in terms of being a head coach. What ideas do you have to build a program and develop culture? And what are your expectations for your staff or your players? So it's a great way to structure and develop those ideas when you're putting together a portfolio. Sometimes people are really short-sighted and think, you know, hey, I got to put together some things for this job interview. When you should, you probably already have a lot of documents and resources that you can utilize to start putting in a portfolio. So, you know, look through all of those files and documents that you have and what things, what ideas do you have that you can include them in a portfolio. Uh, so, again, just to follow up, if you lack experience, it provides an op opportunity to demonstrate your ability. So a lot of young coaches say, well, you know, I'm just starting out. Well, I'm sure you have ideas and philosophies and um, thoughts of, you know, what you would like to do just based upon either, you know, people you've talked to, if you've gone to clinics, um, if you've listened to webinars like these, there are all kinds of ideas that you just need to start getting down on paper and start thinking, you know, in terms of the future, if you were running a program, what kind of things would you like to include in that program? So if you lack experience, you can create experience by putting your thoughts and ideas down in a portfolio format. And lastly, um, I think this is really important. A portfolio will help prepare you for those tough interview questions. And um, when you get access to the portfolio guide on my website, you know, I include um, a guide to interviews that includes tons of question, questions that can be used in an interview situation. Um, and I tell people they should practice answering those questions. If you're really familiar with all of your thoughts, ideas, and philosophies, and the things that you include in your portfolio, you'll be really good at answering tough interview questions because you've already covered that material as you were putting together your portfolio. So, you know, when you're confident in the things that you believe in, you'll be confident in the interview and answering those kind of questions. So it, it'll help prepare you because you've already covered those things over and over while you were preparing your portfolio. All right, so what do coaches want to see when hiring a new assistant? And what do athletic directors want to see when hiring a new head coach? So I'm just going to go through some of the generalities, and then we'll get more into some of the specifics of things uh, that you can include in your portfolio. So, you know, these kind of provide the framework for the next slide, which will um, cover specific things. But head coaches want to see what your strengths are, what are you good at, how do you bring – value to their program. Same thing from an athletic director's perspective when hiring a new head coach. What things do you do really well and how will that benefit the, their athletic program in general? So you really want to focus on all of the things that you do well. And if there are things, you know, just like the, the interview question, what are your weaknesses? If there are areas where you have weaknesses, putting together a portfolio and putting together documents on some of those things where you may not be as uh, good or proficient, um, you know, putting together a portfolio will help you become more confident in those areas and create strengths from your weaknesses. Achievements, accomplishments, and improvements. All right, this is a big one, and I know Coach Four is going to talk a little bit about this when he talks about um, some of his things uh, in the job search process. Uh, he does a great job with resumes and talks about, you know, you got to really brag about yourself and talk about things that you've achieved or accomplished or areas where you've uh, made improvements. So again, when you demonstrate this on your resume, you may not have a lot of space to be able to do that. But with a coaching portfolio, uh, you can then really show, you know, how did you improve a program while you were there? It's not always just on the field or on the court. I mean, statistical kind of things, 
uh, whether it was improving scoring or offensive production, um, number of wins, breaking school records, those statistical kind of things are really important, but you also got to think outside the box a little bit. What kind of things did you do to improve the program or the athletes um, off the field or off the court, which could be in the classroom, like team GPA, if you develop some type of academic progress program. Um, any type of achievement or accomplishment could be a team building program, community service, fundraising, those kind of things. So it's very important to, to not only show those things, but provide concrete evidence of what those improvements were. So if you can demonstrate a percentage or by how much you improved something, that really stands out to head coaches, athletic directors, and search committees that you have evidence to back up of what you did and how it improved. So anything that you can show where you improved a program or the achievements that the program um, had or you know your position group, for example, um, if it did really outstanding things, especially compared to in the past, those are great things to include in your portfolio. Core values or a mission statement, um, what types of values and beliefs are really important to you? Fresh ideas to old problems. Um, you know, a lot of things in today's society, dealing with parents, entitled kids, um, social media, those kind of things. If you have ideas on how to handle those problems, um, those are great things because, you know, the less you can take off the plate of the head coach or the athletic director, the more that you're helping them out to free them up to handle other areas of their program. Program development or culture development, um, you know, this is a really, you know, great thing when people submit their sample resumes that uh, we have on the website for other coaches to view. It's really fascinating to me to all of the terrific ideas that coaches come up with to help develop a culture within their program. And, you know, just like anything, you know, with these webinars, we steal ideas from other coaches. There are so many different things that I've borrowed from other coaches to help develop my own philosophies um, and you know build my own program as a head coach you know developing a culture and developing team standards is super important and this is a great way to show um, how you plan on doing those type of things if you're a head coach and again if you're just applying for an assistant coach position it's still important to have these ideas so that the head coach can see that you're thinking in these terms already and but, you know it's a it's a role that, as a head coach now, I give my assistant coaches a lot of responsibilities and, you know, I'll, I'll turn things over to them. If they have ideas about developing or improving the culture within our program, I let them run with it. So when I'm interviewing for assistants, those are the kind of things I want to see that they're having those ideas already. Dealing with uh, parents and boosters. I mean, this is both at the high school and college level. It's trickled down now where even at the college level, we have to deal uh, with parents and playing time and, you know, boosters both at the high school and college level, um, dealing with those people and their involvement within the program. Recruiting plan, again, super important, not only at the college level, but also at the high school level. Um, you know, if you're at the high school level, you know, more and more parents and players want to know about how you're going to help them get a scholarship or move on to the college level. So what kind of plans do you have in place, uh, especially in sports where the high school coach is still really important in the recruiting process? I know for some coaches or for some sports, I'm sorry, um, you know, when we were in softball, we rely less on the head coaches than we do the travel coaches. Um, but if you're talking to a lot of coaches and you have a really good program or, you know, if if you've only got, if you're at a smaller school and you only have one or two standout athletes, but you feel like they could contribute at the college level, you know, what type of plan do you have to, to get them out there and to get them noticed? Staff, expecta staff expectations and development. This is a big one. Um, and it's an area where I've spent a lot of time in my own portfolio and my staff manual on kind of developing guidelines on, you know, what are the duties and responsibilities for my assistant coaches? Um, what expectations do I have for them moving forward and how will I help them continue to develop 
not only to um, do better in their current role, but also help them achieve their aspirations, whether it's to move on to a higher level or to be a head coach themselves. Fundraising, super important at all levels. If you have great fundraising ideas, it's putting them in your portfolio to demonstrate you know, what the, the ideas are and how they've been successful in the past is really good. Academics, like I mentioned, showing academic progress of your athletes. Community involvement, especially in areas where maybe the community isn't behind a program, like at the high school level, how you get them involved, or if you're at the college level, especially in a small town, how you get more involvement of the community with your program. A plan for winning, obviously this is really important. Um, you know, you with a lot of the things here, we show about building a program, but ultimately how are you going to be successful in putting wins on the field or the court? And why you? Why are you the best candidate? Um, you know, this is something you should be displaying in your cover letter, your resume, your portfolio in the interview. Why should the, that head coach or athletic director or search, search committee hire you? Why are you better than all the other candidates? And, you know, you, there's a lot of competition, as we all know, for coaching positions at all levels. And if you're going up against the other 100 other candidates, what's going to make you stand out? And, you know, if you have a portfolio with a lot of these ideas already in them, that's one way that it can make you stand out from some of the other candidates. And then, you know, what kind of things do you have in that portfolio that will, you know, rise, help you rise above everybody else. So, again, it, it, it all comes down to, you know, thoughts and ideas that you have for developing a program and then really sitting down and taking the time to uh, put them on paper in some format to, to put them in a portfolio, but also help you develop your program. Um, so primary components, what to include in your portfolio. All right, so I can give you examples of things to include, but only you can develop those ideas or those items. Use other people's examples, but use your own ideas. So a lot of times when people... Um, I'll get emails from coaches like, hey, you know, I'm thinking about signing up for the coaching portfolio guy. If I give you all my information, will it just, can you just put it all in and it's going to spit out a portfolio? I'm like, no, that's not how it works, dude. Um, when you're creating a portfolio, you have to do it. Like you can borrow other people's ideas. Um, you can use other portfolio examples, other documents. Certainly we all do that, but you've got to put it in your own format that makes sense to you because you're the one who is developing those ideas further for your own program. So, um, so it's not just a template. Like I can help you create a template. I can show you the things that you may want to include, but you've got to really sit down and think about your ideas and what's important to you and, and use other people's ideas and help that develop your own ideas. So I'm going to go through a list of several things here that you can include in a portfolio. Not all of these things, need to be in a portfolio um, when you present. And I'll talk about that a little bit at the end, um, you know, the different types of portfolios you can use and what, what things you should include when you're actually going in for an interview and, and so on. So I'm going to put this whole list up here and not go through each one. I'm going to, I'll cover some of these briefly. I, I mentioned some of these things on the previous slide. So, and I'll allow some time if you're taking notes out there to write some of these things down as I briefly talk about some of them. Uh, have a table of contents, especially if your portfolio is really long. Now, here and towards the end, I'll talk a little bit about length of your portfolio. I've seen some portfolios as big as 200 pages, especially for football coaches who are applying for head jobs. Nowhere do I ever think in the interview or job search process do I think you'll need a portfolio that includes 200 pages. Maybe for a really big time job and you know you're going to be in front of a search committee of several different people who are going to want to see several different things, maybe. Um, most of the time, the bigger portfolios I've seen are the ones that include a lot of, the, a lot of sections of playbooks or part of your strength and conditioning programs. I, in my opinion, if you have, especially now that you can create digital versions of your portfolios and the cloud services, if you have a portfolio, you can have links to parts of your playbook or your strength and conditioning programs where when people get a digital copy of your portfolio, they can click on that link and see some of those ideas without 
bogging down a 200 page portfolio for a search committee to look at. So um, my, my last portfolio, which I used for my current job was 16 pages and it had almost zero information about softball. And you know, the primary reason that it was short was I knew who was going to be on the search committee. I had an idea of what I felt um, they were going to be looking for and based upon who was on the search committee, uh, my particular search committee was led by the head baseball coach, who was also an assistant athletic director. So obviously, you know, he had a little bit of background in softball. Um, the head women's lacrosse coach was on the search committee. And um, there was another uh, female head coach, of the female program. And then the equipment manager was on the search committee. And then I also, when I was interviewing, I met with uh, the admissions office liaison who was in charge of athletic recruiting. So I knew who was going to be on the search committee and I felt like it wasn't super important that I was going to have to go in and talk about softball strategy. It was more about recruiting and developing program and team culture and standards and those kind of things. So I narrowed down my portfolio, which was somewhere in the range of 40 to 50 pages to about 16 pages of the most important things that I felt were necessary uh, for the, that particular job interview. And that's something, and again, I know Coach Four is going to talk about this. You got to do your homework. You know, what is the community like? What is the school like? What is the program like? Who's going to be on the search committee? Um, you know, what's the socioeconomic background of the area that you're going into interview? So you got to really find out what's important. What types of things is that search committee looking for? And how can you present that information to them in your portfolio? So just quickly going down through some of these things, have the contents. Uh, coaching experience summary. So instead of just including your resume in the portfolio, kind of just summarize everywhere that you've been. The search committee and the hiring director should already have a copy of your resume, but I always just include a page that uh, <clears throat> gives a brief summary of everywhere I've been. Accomplishments and improvements. Um, so I kind of call this like a highlight page. It gives you the opportunity of everywhere that you've been to show what things you improved or what accomplishments you've had. So, and especially if you've been at a, a job for maybe 10 years, it gives you an opportunity to show the progression of how things improved over the years. Uh, so in my particular um, portfolio, uh, any job where I was there for three years or longer, I try to show a little bit of progression of how we improved the program during those years. Coaching philosophy. Um, at some point, most of us sit down and, and kind of write a coaching philosophy. I did mine as one of my graduate classes. So. And I have a, um, uh, a document uh, in the coaching portfolio guide that talks a little bit. If you haven't developed a coaching philosophy, it gives you some direction on how to do that. Program goals, um, you know, what are your in-game goals, your season goals, overall goals for your program? This can be on and off the field or court. court. Um, it could be in the classroom, just in general. So there are a lot of different things you can do in terms of program goals. Coach, uh, quick course, question. statement. Yeah. Quick question for you. Um, what, would you, what would you say for someone that is potentially looking to uh, present or create a portfolio using Google Slides? Um, well, one of the things, uh, you know, I'm gonna talk about some different formats you can do. Um, one of the big challenges with uh, portfolios and even resumes is when you send it out like via email, um, which I recommend, you got to make sure that the other person can view it in, in an appropriate way. So I really recommend that resumes and portfolios, when you send them out digitally, unless you have like a, a web link that you send out, I think you should save it in a PDF format because that's the only way you know that the other person is going to be able to view it and all of your for, formatting is going to look correct. So for example, uh, just over the weekend, uh, someone sent me their resume and they had created it um, on pages or whatever the program is on um, Apple computers, which I despise Apple. So when I tried to open it, one, I couldn't open it at all to look at. So then I asked him to save it in a PDF. And when he saved it, it's still a lot of the formatting didn't look correct to me. So when you, when you go through whatever you're creating your resume or portfolio on, uh, unless you're creating it on a digital web version that's going to, you know, and even when you create a website, if you open up certain websites between Google Chrome and Firefox, for example, sometimes things may look a little different. I've learned that creating websites 
that you have to really go through all the browsers and make sure things look correct. Um, it's a challenge. But if you're doing um, Google, uh, you know, I would still try to do some type of PDF version that you can send out that you know whenever somebody opens it, everybody can look at, um, at a PDF version and the formatting is not going to change when they open it. So um, does that answer the question? Uh, yes, sir. I believe so. Okay. Get some caffeine in me here. Um, program standards, <clears throat> you know, this can include like um, team policies. I when you when you develop, I've really strayed away from including like your list of team policies or team rules because sometimes, you know, you include those kind of things and looking at it from a, a hiring perspective, you know, if you include very specific team policies and team rules. Sometimes, you know, an athletic director or head of a search committee might be like, yeah, well, I'm not sure, you know, that would really fly here. So when we talk about program standards, you know, what's the overall expectation and standards of behavior? Like we all, we, we all talk about representing um, our school, our university, our program in public in an appropriate way. You know, keeping your program standards kind of generic. Um, I think is really important and not going into too much detail on what your exact team rules may be because you may have to follow the handbook of the athletic department either at the high school or college level for example you know um, I've seen people who include what their alcohol and drug policy is and that may not match up with what that school's policy that they already have in place is so try to keep your program standards a little more general uh, innovative program activities uh, you know this to me is one of the big areas where you can really highlight a lot of ideas that you may have in terms of team building, character building, motivational, leadership programs, mentoring programs, community service, charity, special events, um, banquets that you may do, uh, maybe it's uh, mental training programs that you've been involved with, uh, your plan again for relationships with parents and boosters, Philosophy on playing time. I think, you know, I've seen a lot of really good documents on that that coaches have included in their portfolios. Fundraising, we've talked about a little bit about recruiting. We mentioned offensive and defensive philosophy. Again, this is something that may or may not be important in your portfolio. If, if for example, let's say you're going to um, interview for a head coaching position um, at a high school level for head football coach and you run the air raid offense and you're coming in after a coach who just retired and then for the last 20 years they've been really successful running the wing tee you may have to go in and convince the search committee on why your offensive philosophy will be successful at that particular program so um, if you're going in and you're interviewing with an athletic director um, who doesn't have a lot of input about what's run offensively or defensively then it may not be something to include in your portfolio so you kind of that's where you got to do your homework. Program development, especially at the high school level, talking about um, how are you going to develop your feeder programs at the middle school and youth levels. Um, how are you going to recruit players um, to want to be a part of your program? Uh, what is your strength and conditioning program going to look like? How are you going to develop your current players, especially if you're integrating a new system? Uh, measuring success. How do you determine success in a particular game or in a season? What kind of measurements do you use um, to measure that your um, players and your program is being successful? We have some documents uh, in the portfolio guide about that. Modern, monitoring academic progress, I think, is a really big one. Having things in place for uh, keeping your athletes on track to graduate and how you handle those athletes who may be struggling. I think it's really important to demonstrate that you have a plan in place to help those athletes who may struggle. Uh, staff support, duties and expectations of your assistants or your support staff. A yearly ca calendar, um, this is one I highly recommend for coaches who are applying for college level jobs. Um, you may want to have a calendar that shows your understanding of the NCAA rules because um, at the Division One, Division Two, and Division Three, the yearly calendar can vary greatly of what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So, especially if um, you know you're trying to be a head coach at the college level, you may want to kind of show a yearly calendar of what you plan on doing that also shows you understand what the rules and limitations are for 
weekly and daily practices. And then in terms of like a high school level job, I think it's also important to have some kind of checklist of, and this just isn't high school, but also at the college level, having a, a yearly checklist of the things that need to be handled. Um, my checklist is kind of um, on a monthly basis and then it's broken down weekly and daily on certain things that need to be done in terms of, you know, recruiting or, you know, depending upon what time of the year it is in terms of our practices or our scouting and those kind of things. So having a, uh, even if you don't have a calendar, if you have some type of checklist of all of the things that need to be done and when they need to be done, um, I think that's a really great, what, it's not only a great tool to have in your portfolio, but it's a super valuable tool to have as a, as a coach. And I know there are a lot of different things out there. People have, you know, um, checklist of their responsibilities and you can even put it in a format of you know first 30 days uh, I'm just reviewing some of coach force stuff I know he has an article out there you know what do you what do you do the first 30 days that you're hired so those are some great ideas uh, strength and conditioning plan um, practice philosophy practice plans um, you know th it's great to have those things in your overall master portfolio again I'm not sure necessarily sure it's always important to include those things in um, your portfolio that you use for uh, the actual interview and then letters of recommendation especially if you have letters of recommendation from uh, well-known coaches that people will recognize so those are some primary things again these don't all need to be included um, you know I'm going to talk about how to organize your portfolio here a little bit so I know there are a lot of ideas here um, and we'll talk about how to what exactly should you include um, for each job that you're interviewing for? All right, so presenting your portfolio, a hard copy versus a digital portfolio or a website. So your portfolio should not be a static document. I can't stress this enough. It should be easy to modify and always evolving. So I have a folder on my hard drive that's portfolio documents. And then there are folders within that um, folder of, you know, like recruiting documents, practice plan documents. Um, don't try to create one master um, document that includes everything in your portfolio. Instead, have a folder of all of your document, documents separate that you could create a master portfolio, but you want to be able to tailor your portfolio for each specific job you're applying for, especially once you get to the later stages, for example, the interview stage. Um, if you're applying for a lot of jobs, then it's best to have kind of a generic version of your portfolio that you can send out to show some of your ideas. But once you get into the stages where you're actually doing a phone interview or going in for an interview, you want to have a little more um, tailored version of your portfolio for that specific job. Or if you know there's a job you really, really want, then you should be really putting together a portfolio for that particular job. So it's not a static document. It's a it's um, one document that you can plug and pull things in and out from uh, to tailor it for every job that you're applying for. Um, so when we talk a little bit about uh, digital versions versus um, hard copies, so things have changed a lot. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, I was dropping off hard versions of jobs I was really interested in. These days with email and the web, um, it's really easy to, to deliver a copy of your portfolio in a digital version. So a digital version, in my opinion, can take a variety of formats. A digital version is anything that can be shared online. So a PDF is a digital version. A website is a digital version. So I have a website um, page. I call it my portfolio website. So it's, you know, and, and these are becoming more popular for coaches, you have a home page and about page, and I have a page with some of my philosophies that when you click on the link, it pulls up PDF versions of pages of my actual portfolio. So to me, it's you know, I, I do a lot of web design. It's a great way to show that you know I, I can integrate technology into what I do. Um, but if you create any type of, I'll, I'll talk about some different programs you can utilize, but again, you know, save it in a PDF version and then you can send that out via email really easily. Like I talked about, it's a great way to follow up um, after you apply for a job to send out a, a PDF version of your general portfolio. Um, but if you're able to do it in a website version as well, then um, you can do that also. 
hard copies of your portfolio are more important when you're actually going in for an um, interview in front of the search committee. Uh, so in my opinion, an online version is more visually appealing and it's easier to update and produce. So uh, we'll talk about some of the programs you can use to make uh, really visual types of portfolios here in a few minutes. Uh, again, so we I talked a little bit earlier when somebody mentioned Google Slides formatting and organizing your hard, hard copy. Um, you know, you have to be, have the ability to tailor your portfolio very easily. So you want to use a variety of documents to be able to do that. So find a program that's easy for you to copy and paste. For me, um, I've been using PowerPoint the last few years to do my portfolios and pretty much all of my documents, even for like we do all of our practice plans in PowerPoint. Um, we do our playbooks, um, our, anything that we hand out to our players, we're doing all in PowerPoint just because it's really easy to format and organize your ideas. Much easier than it is to use a word processor like Microsoft Word, which a lot of people still use. Um, so as I mentioned, you send a copy to the hiring director and a follow-up email after applying. So this is what I do personally, and this is what I recommend to people. After you've applied for a position, um, find out who the hiring director is, or if it's the athletic director, or if you've applied for an assistant position, it could be the head coach. Send um, just an introductory email, just introducing yourself, saying that you've applied for the position and that you're very interested in it. Um, you can include... A, also include a PDF version of your resume as an attachment, but be sure to um, include a, let them know that you've include a PDF version of your portfolio, or if you have it in an online format, it's a great way to just kind of attach the link at the end, say, you know, just, just mention uh, at the end of the email, I have a link to my portfolio where you can learn more about some of my ideas for program. Um, you include the link and it takes them right to the uh, online version of your portfolio. So. Again, I'll talk about a few ways that you can do that. So it's really easy to, to get your name out there. Um, you know, some people have varying opinions. You, you don't want to bug an AD or a head coach or um, the hiring director. But I, I, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with following up with a short email just to introduce yourself, uh, get your name out there, and include a link to your portfolio so that, uh, you know, if they take a look at your resume and they like what they see, then they have a link to your portfolio and they can kind of look at it a little bit further. In my opinion, that's a way that you can uh, stand out from other candidates. Um, so you have like your master portfolio or your folder on your hard drive where all of your documents are included. Um, so again, I have a master generic version of uh, my portfolio. I have a couple of different version one versions. One has a lot of my philosophies on that specifically rate the relate to softball, such as my hitting philosophy, offensive philosophy, um, recruiting philosophies, developing pitchers, positional play, those kind of things. Um, but when you are preparing for an interview, I recommend that you do a hard copy, tailor it to the job, shorten it to the things you think are most important to what you really want to demonstrate to the committee, what your strengths are, what your highlights are. Um, do a color version, add as many graphics and images that you can, um, take it to Staples and have, a, have about 10 copies printed out. Have it spiral bound with a plastic cover. If you do, um, at my last interview, um, as I mentioned, my portfolio was about 16 pages, so I took it to Staples, had 10 copies made, it cost me about $100. So 16 page, full color spiral bound with plastic cover is probably right around um, 10 bucks for a 20 page version so it's not too bad uh, to be able to do that in my opinion it's you know a great way again to stand out what I did at my interview was as soon as I arrived met with the hiring director who was you know I already had a copy of the itinerary of everybody I was going to meet what the day looked like. So when I first got there, I just handed him the 10 copies. I said, can you make sure that the people I'm going to be meeting with later in the day has a copy of this? And he passed them out. And that way they had the opportunity to take a look at that before I actually sat down in front of every person that I was going to meet with throughout the day. All right. So how to create dynamic portfolios. Um, again, I, 
I highly recommend not to use a word processor. So I've been using PowerPoint and even PowerPoint's probably becoming a little bit outdated and I know it's not exactly what it was created for. The reason that I started using PowerPoint was, you know, in a word processor, it's really difficult to, to just plug and play, copy and paste, add images and move them around uh, to make your documents look really good. PowerPoint is super easy. And again, like I said, I use it for practice documents. It's really easy to add an image. Excuse me, for example, like if you need to add a diagram of the field to kind of sh do a layout of where things are going to occur, to draw plays up, PowerPoint's really easy to do that. And I, I know there are tons of other programs out there, especially the football coaches are utilizing software out there that can help you develop playbooks and everything like that. So, you know, that's one area probably where I'm a little bit behind in. Um, but you know, use whatever you're comfortable with, but also seek out other programs that you can use um, that will help create a visually appealing portfolio and not something, uh, a lot of the older sample portfolios that we have on the Coaching Portfolio Guide website are, were created in word processors and they're really plain looking. We have a lot of good information, but they're very plain looking, just, you know, kind of like reading like a, a paper you would have turned into your college professor. So. Uh, a lot of the portfolios I'm seeing now, especially from young coaches who are really good at using technology, have a lot of great dynamic uh, images and presentations, um, graphs, just visual representations of their ideas I think is really good. So my assistant right now, she's been preparing her portfolio for weeks now. She's using a program called Canva, which I've asked her to show me a little bit more about it, and I'm, I'm going to try to maybe even have her do um, a little video tutorial on how to use it because the the portfolio that she's putting together is outstanding the just the way that it looks really jumps out at you um, i just added a new sample portfolio to the website from a, a college coach who used adobe spark uh, i know a lot of sports information departments use spark to create articles um, but he did a really cool version with adobe spark and it has a web link to it so that he can just send that out when he does his email and then web version and I've been working and I apologize to to everyone who's been a member of the portfolio so I've been working on a tutorial for a while on how to do your own website version of your portfolio um, the coaching portfolio guide was created on a Wix platform which you can do a free version it'll just have the Wix advertising which you know may not be a big deal to you but Wix Weebly GoDaddy you sign up for a domain you can get a free website builder I just think Wix in my opinion is the most dynamic web editor out there in terms of drag and drop things it has a little bit of a learning curve which is why I've been meaning to do a tutorial on it but creating a web version um, not only gives a, a great visual representation and shows your ability to use technology um, but you know it, again it gives you a URL or a web link that you can easily share not only through email but you know through social media um, so I, I just think that's a really great way to develop a general coaching portfolio and show some of your philosophies and also you know we talk a little bit in about in the portfolio guide about developing your personal brand as a coach and you know I talked to Justin a little bit yesterday all these things he's doing um, with these webinars over the past week or so is, is awesome. And I know he's doing because he loves it and wants to give back. But, you know, this is something he can obviously include in his portfolio. He's jumped out there and taken control of this. And this is something that I think he'll want to be able to show that he can do. And it's just an awesome thing. And, and if he, you know, a coach has a website and can show what kind of technology they can use and how they've utilized it, it, again, it just makes you stand out over somebody who's only submitted a resume so um, let me see here what the next slide is where I'm at here time wise how am I doing coach doing well got about questions uh, got about 10 minutes or so okay are there any questions on anything that uh, I've presented so far uh, not as of now there was one earlier that uh, it was kind of a general question to the to the group if anybody had a portfolio that they were willing to share Okay. So some final thoughts, like just, just a review, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, the portfolio guide. Um, 
your approach to developing your portfolio, I, I mentioned this should be that of a head coach who's laying the foundation for their program. Don't look at it as just a way to develop a portfolio for a job interview. Put your thoughts and ideas down in a program manual format, and that will give you ultimately a good portfolio that you can use when you interview. Uh, hiring directors and search committees are all very different. Obviously, I have my own opinion on what I think stands out. Um, you have to find out, do your homework, what's important to them. So a lot of times the recommendations that I give for people's resumes or their portfolios are my perspective from not only being a college assistant and a college head coach and a high school athletic director, but also serving on search committees, uh, especially at the college level and interviewing coaches as a high school athletic director. There are certain things that I like to see. So, you know, that's my perspective. And, you know, it's super important to do as much homework as you can to find out what's important to the people you're going to be interviewing with and what kind of things do you think they're going to want to see. Coach, quick question for you. Well, um, any yeah. advice for college players looking to get a GA spot? Yeah, so um, if you go to the website, coachingportfolio.com, I have an article section, and it's free. Um, I have about four articles that I wrote that talk a little bit about um my experiences of getting into college coaching and the sacrifices that i made and you know i, I talk a lot about what i experienced trying to climb the ladder uh so that's a really good resource those articles there they're all free on coachingportfolio.com you have access to those articles and it talks a little bit about getting into college coaching uh the big thing i mean ga positions are extremely competitive especially in football and basketball and if you are a college athlete, you definitely have an in, which I wasn't a college athlete. I was very fortunate um, that I had the opportunity to be a student assistant in Ohio State. And the reason I had that opportunity was because my dad went to high school with Dom Capers, um, or you know, hopefully he's not too old yet. People don't know who he was, but he was, you know, he's been a defensive coordinator with the Packers. Um, the Steelers was the head coach of the Panthers and the Texans. Um, so at the time, you know, Dom had knew uh, several people that were at Ohio State on staff. Uh, Fred, Fred Pugich was a big one back then. So I had an opportunity just because my dad knew somebody to get on as a student assistant. So, you know, I wasn't a, a college athlete, and that was, the, that was probably really my only way in to get into college coaching was having that opportunity. So being a, a college athlete obviously gives you an advantage if you are a college student and you think you want to pursue coaching, then it's super important to try to find if you can get on um, at the college that you're at um, and get some experience as a student assistant or manager or whatever you can do. Trust me, I mean, we're all looking for help no matter what the sport is or what the level is. Uh, we'll find opportunities to, to do things and let them get experience. So if you're a current college student, try to get on where you're at. If you're out of college and you're trying to get a GA position, and especially if you're not, uh, if you weren't a, an athlete, my recommendation is to volunteer at a, at a local college. So a lot of the my early positions, um, my very first year after graduating, when I was an assistant at the D3 level, my position was volunteer. I worked 40 hours plus a week. As a, an assistant football coach, I coached a position. I was in the office the entire day, but it was a volunteer position, and it was the only thing available to me at the time. And I worked at Walmart in the evenings to make ends meet. Um, but you know, it was a sacrifice I knew I had to make to get the experience on my resume. So if you have a, a full-time job, you can still volunteer to be a part-time your assistant at a nearby college. It's a great way to get your foot in the door, develop connections and also add experience to your resume. Uh, another recommendation that I made, you know, if you look at uh, where everywhere that I've been, um, you know, I added baseball and then I eventually ended up in softball. I, I know a lot of people think, well, you know, I, I wanna be a, a football coach at the college level. I mean, it's a lot of sacrifice in terms of the hours that you put in and time away from your family and friends and you, know, you don't always make a lot of money. Um, but I added other responsibilities. I was supervisor of weight room. I helped out with recruiting for the athletic department in general. I tried to find as many administrative duties that I could do to add to my resume. Um, 
And then, you know, I added other sports and I ultimately, you know, for years I thought I'm going to be, I'm going to be a football coach. I'm going to be a football coach. Well, now I'm a softball coach and you look at the path that I've taken, I've done all kinds of different things along that path and throughout my journey. So don't limit yourself. If you really want to coach at the college level and work with college level athletes, then, you know, don't limit yourself to one sport, get involved in other things. So many coaches end up uh, somewhere where they never thought they would be. So, but getting experience wherever you can is super important in terms of volunteering, part-time positions. Um, and especially if you're still in school, trust me, um, we're always looking for people, student assistants or managers to help out with the program. So coach, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll end on this question, but, uh, Coach wants to know, how would you handle a question during an interview that, like, you just had no idea how to answer? Well, first off, I would try not to put myself in that position. Um, you know, going into an interview, I would make sure that uh, I review every potential question I have. Um, you know, I have a list of a couple hundred questions that I go through, and I try to pick out the ones that I feel like are always going to be the toughest ones for me to answer. And I practice those questions in my head. I have people ask me those questions and I practice those questions out loud. I write down those answers to those questions. So preparation is, is super important in making sure that you can answer almost any question you may get. If you do get a question where you're unsure about it, it's, it's okay to say you're not really sure. Um, you know, and the, the thing is you don't want to ramble on about something where you're totally not sure and make something up it's okay to be unsure and give a brief answer and, and talk a little bit about what you, how you think you might handle it. Um, does that coach have a particular question that, uh, that they, that they know, you know, it's, it's always hard to tell. Sometimes you get a question out of nowhere and it's, it's okay to say, Hey, you know, I, I'm not really sure on that. I'd have to think about that a little bit. Yeah, no, he didn't have anything specific. I think it was just more of a, a general question. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, one other thing I just wanted to throw out there, um, you know, the, the Coach Shooting Portfolio website, you know, I've spent the last six years adding a ton of resources. It has uh, sample portfolios. Um, I'll take a look at your resume for free. Uh, Butcherizer does a brief interview consultation with coaches if they want that. I have a guide that lists all of those 200 plus interview questions. Um, if you are putting together a portfolio and want me to look it over, I'm certainly to do that. And I'm working on the mentoring library. But one thing that I wanted to add that if um, anybody who is uh, currently in school um, as an undergrad or uh, a grad student, we're running a special right now for five bucks access. Um, and there's a page on the on the website where you can sign up for the five dollars. And especially I know during this difficult time, there may be some people who are out of work. Um, you know, don't have the opportunity right now just because financially or um, you know, they've been laid off or they're in between jobs, whatever it may be. If there's anybody who wants access to the guide and feels like, you know, the, the cost is prohibiting them from accessing it, uh, they can certainly um, email me or drop me a message on Twitter or anything like that. We'll make sure that they get access to the guide. I want to make sure that we're helping out as many coaches as possible, especially during this this time right now so 100%. Um, whatever we can do to help out the coaches that's what we're here for absolutely uh coach uh what's the best way or or, or if you don't mind sharing uh some of your contact information so that if any coaches have any questions um they can they can feel free to reach out to you yeah let me uh pop in my info here <clears throat> And then while coach is doing that, if y'all y'all want to drop your, uh, your your Twitter handles in there too, and just like you know, like we always do, just to make sure we're following along with each other and, and contacting each other, uh, please make sure to do that. Uh, coach has shared his email in the, uh, in yep. the chat. Yep. So uh, there's per personal email address. It'll go right to me, and then uh, my primary twi Twitter handle, which uh, you know I've got about ten Twitter handles for a variety of different things and side businesses. So but uh, that's the easiest way to reach me. If you send me an email on, on Gmail, and again, you know, for anybody out there who needs help, I'm here for you. If you want me to look over your resume, I'm certainly happy to do that. Uh, you know, 
again, I, I created the portfolio guide as kind of a business venture to help me out at the time. And it's, it's been successful and it creates some extra income, but if there is a coach that needs help. I'll do whatever I can to help them out. Awesome. Awesome. Well, coach, I appreciate your time, man. That was uh, definitely insightful. Um, you know, once again, I'm, I'm sure people will be reaching out to you with, with more questions or, or, you know, I mean, guys take advantage of if coaches willing to, to read over your resume and things like that. I mean, that's, that's, quite the luxury. So make sure you take advantage of that. But I appreciate your time, coach. Obviously, you know, once again, during this time, we're looking to lean on each other. So the fact that you took the time out to to just kind of offer us some insight on, on what you do and, and some best practices for coaches in any sport um, was tremendous. So thank you. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on.